Welcome back to my channel and thanks for watching this video. This video is about the AC system that's installed in this 1950 Chevrolet truck. It was swapped out of a 19, well, excuse me, a 2000 um, Chevrolet Silverado truck along with the engine, wire and harness, um, you know, fuse box and just everything. I used a brake booster, um, the cruise control and, uh, and a lot of stuff. But we're going to focus on the AC system today. And if you want to see any of the other videos, I'll publish some, uh, some more videos on, you know, the different components of the swap as a whole. But uh, today will be about the AC system. So as you see, uh, these components look new, uh, like the accumulator, the liquid line um, is new. The suction line I used from the, um, the donor truck. And so I had to cut it to actually, because it was, you know, the distance is further away. I, on the liquid line, I was able to actually straighten the bends to get it to reach to the evaporator coil. I put a new compressor in it. And the compressor on this engine is down where I'm pointing uh, this screwdriver. So the compressor is down there. And these two, lines coming off the water pump um the lines that are actually pointing to uh to make a reference these are actually heater hoses right so they're just coming off of the water pump and going up to the uh the, the heater coil that's inside of the, the the unit that's on the inside of the truck this is a look on the inside of the truck of the controls that i swapped out and I just, I, I didn't really want to use these controls, but um, because they look too modern for a vehicle this age or a classic. And so, but I didn't have a choice. So, well, I did have a choice, but it just, it would take a lot of, you know, fabricating, engineering and a whole lot of stuff. But so what I did is I cut this out um, this was just like a grill, if you know what I'm talking about um, before, you know, I cut it and how it looked, um, just looked like a factory panel. Um, so there was no radio here or anything. They just have like a, it's a grill there. And so what I did is I just, you know, cut it and fabricated it, not just, it took, it took quite a while to do it. So. I'm not gonna say it's, it was easy, but to get it to fit and get it to, to work in there correctly, um, it, it took some effort. So it, it was not at all easy, but it actually looks pretty decent. And I wasn't really worried about how it was gonna look because I can kind of visualize how things are gonna look in my head. But on the AC discharge vents, um, I had to fabricate these and they're they're fabricated out of metal that's metal and of course this is metal all of that's metal and it's fabricated um i just did all that at the same time as i fabricated the the gauge pot i have it where it's recessed back and at this angle yeah you can see it okay um you can see over here on the left gauge where it's actually recessed back. Now the factory gauges, they don't recess back, they're flush with this. So I just made a, um, just fabricated some metal and recessed it back and did the finish work. This is a view from the passenger side on the inside of the truck uh, to kind of show you where the, the unit on the inside of the truck is. And from this angle, yeah, you can see it, um, but it's not as bulky as you think it is. You still have a pretty good, you know, leg room. You can see where I'm moving my my, my foot and my leg. Um, I still have to tidy up on some wiring here. I have to tuck that back up in there, but it's not so bad. I mean, there's a considerable amount of room. Now, I'm sitting all the way back in my seat, so, you know, in the bench seat on the truck, so there's a pretty decent amount of room, leg room. Um, you don't have to worry about 
you know, and foot foot space. Um, you don't have to worry about that unit. It is fairly bulky, right? And so, um, but it fits and it allows room for the passenger's legs. This is a view from the driver's side and uh, just ignore the wires and things down there. I have to do all my tidying up before he gets his truck back. But the register on the this side was fairly easy. I just cut a hole because it was flat enough. The dash was flat enough to um, to let the uh, the flange go against it without having to uh, do it like I did the other two. So in this truck, I put a few more things in it, and uh, this is the key fob for it. So it has a passive, active keyless entry. When you approach the truck, it'll it'll wake up. So now it's it's awake, and so we'll go ahead and we'll start it. So you can see the RPM, it idles just as it should because I used a wiring harness and everything. So I didn't have to change much in the program. And this illustrates how hard it's blowing. I have it on five and I'll turn it down to four. Still blowing pretty hard. Uh, turn it down to three, two. And I think he could be okay with, with two in this truck. Actually one would really keep it cool because if uh, even at one, I look over here and the discharge temp is showing about 41 or 42. And I have this thing charged, so it's, it's not low. So don't think that it's low and that's why it's showing a low temp. I have it fully charged. I charge it to like 30 ounces. So, um, pretty cold there so it's, it's kind of making me cold this it's not a it's not a cool day it's about 65 70 degrees outside right now that's with all the windows open this window is open this window it doesn't have a window in the back window is also open so that's with all the windows open and it's still it has a discharge of about 42 45 the accumulator dryer you can see it sweating and um, that's not a real problem because I'm not worried about the heat loss and you know because the fittings and the lines they're gonna sweat too after the expansion valve you know on the cold side or the low side so but it's leaking down onto the headers now these are stainless steel headers and um, so I'll probably end up insulating you know this part of it and you can see down here, I'll put my screwdriver right around in here. That's for the, um, the condensate discharge. And so I just probably need to take me a hose and put it on here and like a drain hose and just drain it down to the side of the frame so it's not dripping down onto the hot headers or anything. So um, that's all I have to do with that. The fuse box that I took out of it. The, uh, the donor truck, that's the AC relay. And so it's a long story as far as um, you could you could make your computer control your fans when the AC comes on. Um, but this truck, if you look in toward the water pump, it's threaded on the end of the water pump. That had a, an actual clutch fan on the water pump pulley. And so that's that was the cooling fan. It didn't have an electric fan in the, the donor truck. So what I did was I took the output off of the, the AC clutch uh, to energize the AC clutch off this relay, the 12 volt um, signal, and went to another relay, right? And just, you know, had the switching side or the common side uh, come off of 12 volts from the battery and so it just switches my fan on and off and basically jumps over these or this um, this is a just a, a temp switch that I have in the radiator um, coming down where the where the um, the water research back or the coolant research back and comes down through the radiator there's a sensor there 
Uh, so this uh, this is adjustable here. So all this relay does is just a relay to jump over this switch to jump it out to go straight to the fan, and uh, so to make it serve as a as a um, as a condenser fan basically when the AC is running, just so I have a little bit of airflow over across the coil. And I had the the fans actually, or the fan, the cooling fan actually hooked where the computer would control it, right? But I don't know what happened. I either changed my program and dumped a program that it wasn't programmed into it, into the computer, but it stopped working. So that's why I ended up using, you know, the thermal switch. And it's been working like that, so, but I had it working from the computer and there is a wire coming off of, I think it's number 33 um, on C2, it might be C1, but either way, um, coming off of that and in the program, you can program it to have a research door, a recirculation door output or an auxiliary fan output. I want to thank you for uh, taking time out to watch this video. My videos get kind of long, but I'm, I'm trying to include a lot of information in these videos. And I try not to make like a series of videos. Um, so um, thanks for watching the entire video. You know, like I said, go ahead and give me questions and comments. And, you know, if I can help you in any way, I will. And hopefully, hopefully I've, you know, I've tried to include everything in this video. Um, not the whole process of the swap, but, you know, just the general details uh, that show that you can do it and it's possible. You just have to, you know, make a few modifications. So thanks for watching this video. Share it with anyone you think that it'll help. And uh, like I say, uh, give me a thumbs up and, uh, you know, post your comment if you have any, any questions and I'll get back with you. Thanks for watching this video. See you on the next one.